Starting at number 10, we have the Colosseum. Now, the Colosseum was originally the Flavian Amphitheater, and it's an elliptical amphitheater in the center of the city of Rome over in Italy. Now, this is one of the greatest pieces of architecture that's ever been built in the history of Rome. Now, it's the largest amphitheater to have ever been built in the Roman Empire. It's a circular structure that takes up a large site in the east of the Roman Forum, and the amphitheater was built to organize gladiators contests as well as dramas and games all sorts of things so that the public can come and just have a great time the wonder at number nine is not as massive as a Colosseum but we have the Leaning Tower of Pisa now this tower was built first in Pisa which is a city also in Italy and it dates back to August 14th of 1173 it's known for its tilt towards the right side and the construction of this tower continued for over 200 years due to wars that broke out now till this day the actual name of the tower is completely unknown but the leaning tower of Pisa as it's known as is designed as a circular bell tower that would stand 185 feet tall now it's constructed of white marble and there's been many suggestions to actually straighten out the tower including taking it apart stone by stone and rebuilding it in a completely different location but that's never happened and also back in the 1920s the foundations of the tower were actually injected with cement grouting. That way it could stabilize the tower to some extent. They definitely don't want it to fall. But at the same time, they're like, should we keep it like this? Is it always gonna stand tall and not tip over? Well, so far, so good. Chichen Itza is up next. Now, it was founded by the Maya civilization in 400 AD, and it's located in the Yucatan Peninsula, now called Mexico. Now, Chichen has a history that is 1,500 years old and is located 75 miles away from Merida. It's said to have been the main regional point for different ceremonies. And during the earlier days, it was governed by priests, and Chichen means at the mouth of the well of Itza. That's the full name. So Chai stands for mouth, Chen is for well, and, and Itza is the name of the tribe. Now, one of the main beliefs is that people were thrown from the top as sacrifices to their gods to make them happy for some reason. But nobody really knows exactly every single thing that happened at Chichen Itza. In any case, we got some more wonders to look at. At number seven, we have Hagia Sophia. Now this is a masterpiece structure. Hagia Sophia is a former Christian patriarchal basilica or church and later became an imperial mosque. And now it's a museum in Istanbul, Turkey. Hagia Sophia is currently the second most visited museum in all of Turkey. And it has about 3.3 million visitors every single year. From the time the structure was converted, it was the principal mosque of Istanbul and the Hagia Sophia served as the inspiration for many other Ottoman mosques. Some of those mosques that it inspired include the Blue Mosque as well as the Rustam Pasha Mosque and the Kilic Ali Pasha Mosque. While we're on the topic of religious structures, we have Christ the Redeemer statue. Now it is the largest Art Deco statue in the world and it's the fifth largest statue of Jesus in the world. Now it's a symbol of Christianity all across the earth and the statue has also become a cultural icon of both Rio de Janeiro and Brazil on a whole. It's also listed as one of the new seven wonders of the world. Now the statue is 30 meters or about 98 feet tall and that's excluding its eight meter or 26 feet pedestal. The arms stretch 28 meters, which works out to be 92 feet wide. And it is made of reinforced concrete as well as soapstone. And it was constructed between the years of 1922 and 1931. Now the structure at number five, we have the Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal was constructed by the Mughal ruler Shah Jahan in memory of his wife, Mumtaz Mahal. Now the Taj Mahal is regarded as probably the best example of Mughal architecture and it's also widely recognized as the jewel of Muslim art in India. It's one of the world's most celebrated structures as well as most recognized structures in general. The Taj Mahal attracts more than 3 million visitors every single year and also back in 2007 it was declared one of the top 10 wonders of the world. We're gonna go visit Rome once again to check out the Roman baths. 
Now, the Phoebus Roman Baths are very complex. It's a complex site of historical interest. And this place here is very well preserved and it was used for Roman public bathing. But here's the thing though, it's actually a reconstruction of the previously destroyed baths. It was destroyed in the sixth century and then reconstruction of the baths happened over time with the last additions being done in the late 1800s. Now these baths are a major tourist attraction of the modern world and they receive about 1 million visitors every single year. Visitors, they can view the baths and the museum but they cannot enter the water. Moving on now to number three, we have Petra. Now this is an archeological city of Jordan and it was famous for its rock cutout structure as well as its water conduit system. Another name for Petra is the Rose City and this is because of the color of the stone out of which it's carved. It was established during 312 BCE as a capital city of the Arab Nabataeans. It's also an important symbol of Jordan and it's located on the slope of Jebel al Madba, which is in a basin among the mountains which form the eastern flank of the Araba, which is a large valley that runs from the Dead Sea all the way to the Gulf of Aqaba. Here we have Machu Picchu coming at number two. Machu Picchu is a pre-Columbian Inca empire and it's a site that's located almost 8,000 feet above sea level. Now the site is located on the mountain ridge above the valley of Urumbamba in Peru. And now the city is also called the lost city of Incas. Machu Picchu was built around the year 1450 and this was at the height of the Inca empire. It was then later abandoned just over 100 years later in 1550. 1972. Machu Picchu was then later on declared as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and that happened in the year 1983. Now fast forward to 2007, it was voted as one of the new seven wonders of the world and it remains so to this day. But at number one, we have the Great Wall of China. Now this is considered to be one of the new seven wonders of the world as well. The Great Wall of China was constructed during the 7th century BC. Now the wall is actually a series of fortifications built to protect the Chinese states and empires against enemies. Even if you've never been to the Great Wall of China, you know about it, everybody knows about it, and it's globally recognized as one of the most impressive architectural feats that has ever been done in history. Also, the most well-known sections of the wall were built by the Ming Dynasty that was in power from 1368 to 1644. According to an archeological survey, the entire wall with everything included, all the different branches and all of that, measures a total of 21,196 kilometers long. Okay. Jamaica, man, it's got one really famous haunted place, and that is called Rose Hall. Now, apparently Rose Hall is haunted by a ghost named Annie Palmer, which, oddly enough, they call the White Witch. Weird. Now, Rose Hall was initially built in the 1770s, but nowadays it's practically a resort, and a really nice one that. You can go do some serious golfing. Yo, by the way, if any of you guys are golfers, hit that like button. Seriously, did nobody hit the like button there? Right, because golf... Those pants, they're just too goofy. Now currently, it is owned by Miss World USA, Michelle Rollins. But as for the ghost, well, got some bad news because it's really not real. Now it was fictionalized from a Jamaican novel called The White Witch of Rose Hall by Herbert G. DeLisser. Now it was published in 1929 and yes, yeah, some people still say, oh well, he got it from a story of a ghost that was in Rose Hall. So maybe that's true, but that is where the story really blew up from. Now keep in mind, there was a woman that did exist and her name was Rosa. But unlike the ghost in the story, they didn't share very similar character traits. But who knows, what do you think? Haunted, yay or nay? Now guys, we gotta move on to number two because first of all, I might be related to this lady. We're talking about the brown lady of Rhina Mahal. Now her actual name is Lady Dorothy Walpole. That's right, Walpole for the win, yeah! <laughs> so, that's right, oh, us Walpoles, we definitely would be scaring people after we die because we, uh, we just <laughs> love getting under people's skin. Now the hall was completed in 1637 and for 400 years it was owned by the Townsend home. Now Dorothy Walpole, she was the sister of the first Prime Minister of England, and that was Robert Walpole. Dude, 
and I got royalty in me too? This is awesome! Now as for Dorothy, she is probably the most famous ghost in the entire world. You probably have seen this image before and yeah, it's terrifyingly creepy. That staircase? No thanks. It's not like Gone with the Wind where you're carrying a beautiful dame up the staircase. This one, you're running away from the staircase. Now this photo was taken in 1936 and the story is that Dorothy committed adultery with a man by the name of Lord Wharton. And when her husband Charles Townsend found out, he locked her in a room where she died from starvation. Now the first person to see the ghost of Dorothy was Lucia C. Stone during a Christmas gathering in 1835. Woo! Just scary! No, get me out of this video! Ah! Now for number three, let's go down under. We're talking about the Princess Theatre in Melbourne, Australia. Now this theatre sat 1,488 people when it opened in 1854. Now it is the oldest continuing entertainment theatre in all of Australia. By 1885, it was under the hands of new management, but the theatre had become run down, so the owners demolished it and rebuilt a new one the following year. And where the ghost stories come from is all because of March 3rd, 1888. Woo! Got it right. This is where Frederick Baker was performing the opera Faust. He apparently fell into a trap door and suffered a severe heart attack. He was immediately taken to the hospital, but his cast and crew were like, no, he was there for the final bow. And since then, there have been numerous sightings of Frederick, but the theater honors his death by having an open spot for him at every single showing. Okay, next one, we're talking about the Waverly Hills Sanatorium. It is the creepiest place on earth. <laughs> you know when you talk about insane asylums? Yo, that's kind of what it is. Although it's not actually an insane asylum, it's a tuberculosis hospital. Just as creepy, right? Because let's be honest, you can't talk about haunted places without an abandoned hospital. Now this is one of my personal favorites because it is just so creepy, I would love to film a movie there. I've always wanted to go, but I've never had the time. Now it was originally built in 1910 in Jefferson County. Jefferson County had become ravaged by the disease of tuberculosis and they needed a hospital quick. However, around 1961, the site actually closed because, well, they developed an antibiotic to fight off tuberculosis. However, it was reopened in 1962 as a geriatric center, but it closed in 1982 due to patient neglect. Now, since then, there has been a lot of attempts to reopen this building. However, in 2001, it was purchased by Tina and Charlie Mattingly, who now use the site for ghost tours and spend their earned money on restoring the site. And as a matter of fact, you can see they've even put in new windows. Boo. <laughs> Among the beautiful places of the Philippines, you'll find some places that are terrifying, scary, and haunted as well. We have the Baleti Drive. This is a two-lane street in Quezon City, and it's believed to be haunted by a white-veiled lady who appears often just out of nowhere. Trees line the road, so that adds to the scary feeling. And as the story goes, the white veiled lady is the ghost of a girl who passed away in a car accident. And she had gotten lost, so she tried to hitch a ride with somebody else so she could just make it back home. Now, other stories say that the ghost is actually of a young lady from the Spanish era. Either way, driving down the street, especially at nighttime, is not advised. The place at number nine is Ozone Disco. On March 18th, 1996, a fire broke out in this disco and more than a hundred people lost their lives. Most of them were students that were graduating from local universities. And nowadays, Ozone Disco is an abandoned disco, but there have been many reports of strange activities happening there at night. People have seen things like disco lights flashing, they have heard sounds of people, as well as have seen silhouettes of people dancing. Number eight leads us to Ballet Negrensi. Ballet Negrensi is an ancestral house located in the province of Negros Occidental and it was the home of a sugar baron and the house still contains several rooms for his 12 children. It's been maintained up until now and it serves as a tourist destination and a museum at the same time. Now what makes this place creepy though is that the rooms are so preserved, like it looks like somebody still lives in them. There are also rooms that have mirrors in the house and looking into them gives you that feeling that somebody might appear behind you at any time. You know, kind of like in the movies where somebody's looking in the mirror and then they see the figure appear behind them and they turn around and nothing's there. Yeah, <laughs> that feeling. Fort Santiago is up next at number seven. 
This historic site turns really creepy at nighttime. Before the Philippines liberation, Fort Santiago was the center of both American and Spanish colonial governments. The city's walls still stand tall during the day, but in the evenings, they give off a very dark and spooky vibe. There have been many reported sightings of ghosts of Filipino soldiers in that area, and residents also claim to hear screaming from the dungeons. It's said that the Japanese really tormented and got rid of many, many Filipino soldiers during the World War II era. Next up, I gotta talk about the Manila Film Center. The Manila Film Center is infamous for a construction accident that happened on November 17th, 1981, where more than 100 construction workers fell from the collapsed scaffolding and they were buried in cement. It's believed by some people that the construction workers were actually buried on purpose because, you know, conducting a search and rescue operation and even going and recovering bodies of those who did not survive would take a long time and that would delay the construction of the building. Some people who have visited the building reported wailing sounds and screams of men in pain and it's believed that these are the spirits of those who were buried in the cement. 455 A Sackett Street in Brooklyn is an apartment with a detailed history of creepy incidents. One woman who grew up there writes about her first-hand experiences, including unexplained fires, seriously bad energy, family tragedies, personal suffering, and here's the kicker, the body of a child discovered in the wall after several suspicious sightings of a similar looking shadow child in the mirror. Next up on our tour, we have the Hotel Monte Vista. The Hotel Monte Vista, which opened as the community hotel in 1927, has a history of underground opium dens, speakeasies, and gambling. Today, the hotel is known for the paranormal activity that haunts some of the rooms and halls. Specifically, guests who have stayed in room 220 have experienced the TV changing channels on its own accord, and some have said they felt cold hands touching them in their sleep. There's also reportedly a phantom bellboy who knocks on doors and announces room service but when guests get to the door, no one is there. One of the more popular and possibly most disturbing encounters is the sound of an infant crying in the basement. All right, moving on to Myrtle's Plantation. Rumored to be on top of a burial ground is the Myrtle's Plantation in Louisiana, which is the home to at least 12 different ghosts which have apparently been sighted. Constructed in 1796, ghost stories center around the tale of an enslaved woman named Chloe who had her ear chopped off after she was reportedly caught eavesdropping on her masters. Seeking revenge, Chloe killed two of the masters daughters by poisoning a birthday cake. She was then hanged by her fellow enslaved people and today is reportedly seen wandering the plantation with a turban to conceal her ear. All right, next up we have the Mizpah Hotel. In 1907, Mizpah Hotel opened as one of the first luxury hotels in Nevada. With a rich history and elaborate decor, the hotel is best known for its legend of the Lady in Red. A woman was murdered in her room on the fifth floor. Some say it was a jealous ex-boyfriend. Those who stayed at the hotel say the lady in red whispers in men's ears and leaves pearls from her broken necklace on guests' pillows. And bringing us down to number one today, we have the Hotel Cecil. Now, more cursed than haunted, downtown LA's Hotel Cecil got such a bad rap that it actually changed its name to Stay on Main. The first recorded death by suicide was in 1931, followed by a long string of similar deaths. 
At some point in the 30s, one man was pinned to the exterior wall by a truck, a woman murdered her newborn in the building in 1944, and the pattern of suicides continued into the 60s. In 1962, a woman jumped from the ninth floor window and landed on a pedestrian, killing them both. In 1964, Goldie Osgood was brutally murdered, a crime that has remained unsolved till today. The weirdest is definitely the disappearance and death of 21-year-old traveler Alyssa Lamb. Few weeks after Lamb went missing, her body was discovered in the rooftop water tank after visitors and tenants complained about a funky taste in the water. There's even a creepy Netflix documentary about it that you might want to check out for more details. Caritas Hospital. Located in Bucharest, the Caritas Hospital is one of the oldest hospitals in the city. In 1933, the Jewish community of Bucharest established the new maternity, and in 1941, just before World War II, the Romanian military transformed the building into a war hospital for the second time, and the state authorities nationalized it in the year 1948. And then right after the nationalization, some of the best medics in Romania, they moved their cabinets here. And the building became a university's hospital. The hospital continued to function up until the year 2005, when it was returned to the Caritia Foundation. But six years later, the hospital was permanently closed and everyone was moved to other hospitals. The hospital is completely abandoned and filled with disease right now. Now let's look at the Chianja Monastery. The Chianja Monastery was completed in the year 1790 and soon after its completion the church was bombarded by the Turks. All the documents that were inside were completely destroyed by fire but the church stood standing. The monastery shortly after was abandoned due to a plague that started and no one has ever returned to restore it since then. And the crazy thing though is that after the 1977 earthquake the bell tower of the church fell and was washed away by the river and locals say on nights where there's a full moon the church bell can be heard leading many to believe that the church is haunted with spirits. Ooh, the witch's pond is next at number three. In the Boldu Kretieshka forest near Bukharesh, magic and rituals happen frequently here. This location is completely filled with all kinds of sorcery. Witches perform their rituals here every single year during the Saznianelli celebration in June. Also, the place just never dries up, like, and it never expands, and neither rain nor the lack of rain affects the pond in any way. Even animals can sense that something is up with this pond because it's said that they never even drink water from there. At number two, we have the Chismigu Hotel. This hotel was left in ruins in the year 1970, and in the year 1990, the Theater Academy turned it into a residence for students. But one weekend, a young girl fell down an elevator shaft because it was so dark she hadn't even realized that she wasn't actually stepping into a room. And as the story goes, for about three hours, she screamed for help, but no one heard her. This was because on this particular weekend, almost all of the students had gone home and since then people report hearing her screams for help in the rooms and hallways of the hotel. And our final scariest place in Romania is the Hoya Bacu forest. And now this is considered to be the world's most haunted forest. There's a whole slew of unusual phenomenon that happens like creepy voices, lights coming out of nowhere, strange shadows, and apparently there's a portal that leads to a parallel universe. It literally has everything that you see in the movies. That's crazy. People who have gone into the forest have suffered from burns on their skin, headaches, anxiety, among other things. And others have said that spirits are haunting the forest. The forest also has like this spot of land where nothing actually grows there. So you know me, I'm not gonna go and travel into that forest to see if it's haunted or not.